Listen to that. Hear that? So I think that'll have to do for now and then normally I let the moustache just settle for a little bit As it dries it normally gets a little bit easier to play with but that's my little uh, camping grooming session done for this morning G'day guys, yesterday was my birthday I had probably the best day that I think I've ever had I got up to a few little things, went fishing, I just had a good time And I'm here on my own still, I've got the dory over there behind me And then pretty much my camp set up like this swag nothing too fancy so i woke up this morning and the weather was pretty average i had a bit of a sleep in i uh, wasn't gonna rush things i'm just you know chilling out not any time constraints the last thing i want to be waking up to when i'm on holiday is an alarm clock i plan on being here for another couple of days so i'm going to do a bit of exploring in the tinny and because i've got the ute set up like this with the awning out and everything what that means for me is I don't actually want to be packing up and resetting up and driving around during the day. So instead of doing that, what I do is I jump in the tinny and we'll go down and we'll explore the bays and then we can just anchor up. I can walk in onto the shore and explore that way. So yeah, I'm just going to cook myself up a bit of a brunch right now. I haven't actually really been bothered cooking breakfast for the last couple of days. I've just been waking up and easing right into it. So we'll get that on the go and then we'll work out what we're going to do next but I promise you it's going to be a banger regardless so I cannot wait. Thanks for being here, let's get into it. So for brunch, I've already cracked my first cold one. Last night I had fish wraps for dinner with that pinky that I caught. So I've got half an avocado, half a tomato, might squeeze some lemon on there so that doesn't go to waste. Two mushrooms, two eggs, some red onion I'm going to cook two of these Angus beef sausages, a couple rashes of shortcut bacon, all on some bread with some butter. Get that up ya. I don't know about you guys, but I can put lemon on absolutely everything because I've got avocado on there. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, geez, that's a bit out of uh, view. Beautiful. So I'll crack some salt and pepper onto that. And then I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy my breakfast of champions in this beautiful place. What I'm actually gonna do now is drive over to the mangroves of my boat and go for a bit of a forage over there. Because I've got that pinky last night and I've still got a couple dinners or lunches left out of that in the fridge, I don't want to go fishing again until I used all that because me personally, I'm not the biggest fan of catch and release fishing just purely for the sake of catching the fish to release them. I'm all about it if, uh, if you're going fishing for food and you catch one and it's not what you wanted or it's too big, too small, you release it, do the right thing. But as far as just fishing willy nilly for no reason whatsoever, other than a photo, I prefer just to not do it at all. So I'm gonna go for a forage, go see if we can find some cockles or some oysters and anything like that growing over in the mangroves, maybe even some crabs. Okay, so I've just made it over here and pretty much the plan is if you're looking at what I'm looking at That's the tip of the mangroves over there and then we're just in the slightly deeper water now But we're coming up to the sandbank The visibility is really good My biggest concern obviously is running aground and the boat is too heavy for me to move around on my own Even though it's a tinny it still weighs a few hundred kilos this one 
So I'm just going to idle my way up to the edge of the sandbank here and then see what I can get away with. But otherwise I might drop the anchor just on the edge here and then walk my way over. And then we'll have a bit of a snoop around and see what we can find over there. You know, as I walk down through here and head in towards the marshlands here, it's just one of those moments you really do feel like you live a really cool life. But I, I get a lot of messages from people, depending on if you're a repeat watcher or not, like if you've seen my content before or you follow me on Instagram. But I have people hit me up all the time saying, man, you look like you live the life. But the reality is I, I still spend from 4, 6 a.m. every morning until almost 5 p.m. every afternoon out of the house working as a plumber, doing the day-to-day -day thing five to six days a week. It's just that in pretty much every spare moment I get when I'm not spending time either working out, making sure I maintain my fitness, hanging out with my dogs to make sure that they live a good life, and then editing as well. That takes up a huge amount of my time. When I'm not doing those three things, I use as much time and energy as I can to do this sort of stuff so I'll plan big trips away and like this one even if it's solo I'll just make it happen so it's not this whole big thing of like I'm just living large and doing all this cool stuff that you guys can't everybody can do it you just got to make the time and effort and probably the biggest thing is the money commitment as well like my full drive I've put about sixty thousand dollars into that over the last two years I've got my boat Maintaining a boat costs a lot of money. To use it costs a lot of money. To buy fishing gear costs a huge amount of money. Like people will say to me when I tell them that I'm thinking about traveling and doing all that sort of stuff, they say, oh, you'll be able to catch fish on the road and at least you'll save a lot of money through doing that. It's like, if you want to save money, don't fish at all because fishing is so expensive and you'll pretty much never ever get in front financially. I just thought it'd be worth mentioning that because you know, I feel, I feel really, really good out here at the moment, but this isn't my life year round. I'm just doing this stuff whenever I get time and making sure I really put in the effort at any opportunity I get. But we're saying that I'm almost there now. I've walked through here. There's actually been bugger all through the sand flats here. I thought there'd be more around. I'm, I'm pretty skeptical and observant when I'm walking through sand flats, not to step on anything. There's cone shells, stonefish, some stingrays as well you see buried into the sand sometimes and all you can see is their tail sticking out and I'd hate to step on a stingray especially if it threw its barb up so otherwise it's been pretty good walking through here no crabs nothing yet there's a stingray over there if you can follow my finger it's just shooting off doing its thing I'll leave it alone it leaves me alone so straight away, first thing I'm observing is all the cockle shells. This is what I'm after, if anything, I want the oysters. There's half an oyster shell. So I've, we'll keep having a look around. But pretty much, a heap of oysters here on the trees growing. Probably one of the things that blew me away most when I first visited these mangroves last time I was here was the amount of sea life that gets beached in here. So with these tide changes, you can see it's out at the moment and it comes right up through into here and then right up past there. What happens is you get all the sea life like stingrays, shovel nose sharks, etc. And they come up here thinking everything's gonna be all sweet. Tide goes out, they don't make it with the water and then they end up beached here. So I'm sure I'm gonna find some dead animals around here in a minute. I think there's a heap of mussels or a heap of cockles or something over here. Cause there's a heap of birds over there. But right there, you can see it sticking all through the sand. So we'll go walk out in the middle of there and have a good look around because that, that bit there definitely only gets exposed to in low tide. Hmm. Looks like I'm not the first one here. I'm sure if I dig down a bit, there'll be plenty of unopened ones in there, but... So these are all just empty shells to cockles, mussels, oysters, all of this. 
but it's pretty cool. There's not many landscapes like this around. So to be here, be the only person around checking all this sort of stuff out, it's pretty awesome. All right, the birds are starting to get a little bit shaky with me coming up towards them. They've sort of got their wings ready like they want to fly away. So rather than disrupt them, I'm just going to walk back over to these mangroves here. I'll go pick myself some oysters, have a quick look around for a little bit longer, and then I'm going to walk back to the boat and head back over to camp, I think, because if I leave it too long, even though it looks like the tide's coming in rather than going out right now, I would rather be safe than sorry, because the last thing I want to be doing is sleeping over here. So this is pretty cool here. This is definitely where a guitar shark's been laying. Big shovel nose, laying right there. Sucked into the sand, it's got up and swum off at low tide. You can see the same thing here with the stingray. Full print of a stingray there, more of an eagle ray type body. And then it just would have had its tail coming out like that. So obviously what I was saying before is like those things would have just made it out of here just in time as the tide went out. But if they're behind these sticks here, they don't tend to be so lucky. So I've just walked up this little sandbank here, just having a bit more of a suss around, and then through here, it dips back down to a lower level again. Now I'm going to see if I can find my way through and actually take a look at what's in these marshlands here. This should be fresh water, so we might have different things growing through here. So I'm going to be honest with you guys, I really have no idea what I'm looking at or looking for. Listen to that. Hear that? Nothing. There's nothing. You've never heard peace and quiet like this place. Now last time I was here I was actually looking for mud crabs, a bit further back, sort of on the ocean side of it, but this is actually quite interesting to see that there's fresh water, well I assume fresh, right in the centre here. So I might have a bit of a stomp around. I've got my waders on, see what's around. If nothing, I'll go get these oysters and then we'll jump back in the ocean. I'm not seeing much, but what I am seeing is that I'm getting bogged. So I think I'm gonna get out of this little swamp Whoa. before I actually become part of it. Oh, all right, let's get back up out of here. Backpack. Oh man, that smells like fresh water too. And when I say fresh, stagnant fresh water, not fresh fresh. So here, give you a close up of all the oysters on here. Everywhere. So this is probably the best looking oyster tree that I've found out of all of them. So I've got my screwdriver here. I brought some Ziploc bags with me too, so I'm just going to pick the nice ones off the tree that I find. Ooh, I accidentally broke the shell off the back of that one. So I'll take probably a little more than a dozen of these. I don't need heaps. Two there. Yeah, some nice size ones. There we go. Right, that's bunched together. I think that's just about gonna do me. So they're not massive individually. So I probably grabbed about 12, 15 there. I'll take them over to camp with me and then we'll get them opened up and tuck into them tonight.
All right, so I'm back from that fun little adventure. What I really wanted to work out was how to fly the drone and get some mobile reception. Neither of those things came about, but I'm back and I've got some oysters. So now I'm gonna work out how to open them up because I'm not gonna to lie to you guys one little bit. Getting fresh oysters is something I've never ever done before and I would not even know where to start with how to open them. I only buy them from the restaurant when they're 50 bucks a dozen. Otherwise, yep, I've never ever had them. So I have a feeling smoking them's meant to be the way or warming them up somehow. So this is my effort on the mud cake that I cooked yesterday in the last episode for my birthday. Still going strong. I'll probably uh, finish the rest of it either tomorrow or the day after, but I'm just gonna tuck into another piece now before I get stuck into these oysters. So I've got my bag of oysters here. I just checked the fisheries uh, app as well and they said 20 is your bag limit. So I'm probably at about just over a dozen there. So I'm all sweet there. Now, I need to get this bad boy open. Now, this is one of those moments that I really wish I had reception so I could actually look up how to open an oyster. It looks like it wants to open, but I don't, also don't want to smash my hand with a screwdriver. All right, there we go. There is our nice fresh oyster straight out of the mangroves. All right, thankfully that tastes pretty normal and pretty good too. Fortunately, <laughs> it's one of those things. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Definitely a lot fishier, I find, straight out of there. Like you get the salt taste out of that, but that's actually pretty good. So I've got some lemon there. I probably won't do any sauce with it. I'll do the lemon. Um, I'm gonna slice some up and squeeze some on and we'll crack a few more, but I'll take you over to that rock over there and we'll crack them on there. And then hopefully, like, with anything food related, obviously, when you think about people over the years, hunter-gatherers and stuff, there's always running that risk that you're gonna eat something that's got a disease or is infectious or makes you sick. So I'm hoping that even though I've just gone and collected these oysters off my own back without anyone showing me how to ever do it or the proper way to collect them or eat them. I'm assuming that straight out of the ocean like that is the way to do it and that they're gonna be fine to eat. So I'm gonna crack into a few more of these. I'll either bring that rock over here or I'll take you to that rock because it makes it a hell of a lot easier to crack a shell open. I really wonder if there is a technique. Of course there is. You couldn't waste a lot of time getting into these otherwise they wouldn't be profitable in a restaurant, but geez, they're tough to get into. Might just be the style of oyster, I'm not sure. Oops. They look like they'd be easy as to open from on top when I'm looking at them. But be damned if I can actually get a screwdriver or anything in there to pop them open. If you know when you're watching a David Attenborough documentary and they're studying monkeys and how they're suddenly learning how to use tools and harvest food, well, I feel like that's what I'm doing right now. Just got the smallest bit amount of smoke smoldering here because I have no idea what to do with these oysters. And it actually looks like it's working. Like I can see all the moisture seeping up out of the edges of the oyster shell. I'm not quite sure if that'll open them naturally or not, but you can feel the smoke coming off of them. And there's a little bit of heat in there, not heaps, but I am curious to know if that'll open them up or not. And if they'll taste like smoked oysters. I'll probably give them another half hour or something and see if they open up and see what they taste like. Otherwise, I've got fish in the fridge, but what I think I'll do is cook up some pizza tonight. I've got a pizza stone for the Weber, brought some anchovies, salami, all the ingredients I need to make a nice sort of pizza. So I think I'll do that. Probably not gonna get through all these oysters, to be honest, but it was a bit of an experiment. I have no idea what I'm doing with them, but the beauty of having no internet reception is I can't work it out either. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you guys a run and show you these oysters straight from the top of fine. So I'm having, oh, get these mozzies away. First night the mozzies have come out. I've had them sitting on this smoke for about probably almost an hour. There was definitely some that were opening up before. Oop, there we go. There's your oyster in there. 
smoked out of it. So all the juices and everything have come out. And it pretty much just looks like a smoked oyster that you'd buy in the can from Coles or something. But they taste so nice like that. When they go a bit chewier like that, man, that's brilliant. These ones are like a midway between a smoked oyster and a natural one. Because the smoke, the smoke has opened them up, but they're still quite juicy and salty. Still, you know, got that natural texture. Man, this was an awesome idea. At first, I was very skeptical about what I've done, but now that I'm actually eating them, I'm like, yeah, all day long, I could eat these. There you go. That's a good one again. So when they're like that, I've worked out that's how I enjoy them most. Exactly like that. All the juices smoked out of them. And you just chew straight on that one. It's another nice close look there. Half smoked, half natural oyster. Straight out of there. I know chewing on them probably grosses some people out, but when they're like that, the texture's actually pretty good. Yeah, this one will definitely open. Oh yeah, see all those juices coming out, that is brilliant, that's my favourite, just like that. Man, they are amazing, I was so, so hesitant, now I'm thinking about, oh, do I need to go back there and make another trip tomorrow and try to get some more, a little bit of sand never hurt anyone. So I think that's going to just about do me, I think. There's only one or two left there that are openable, but I've just done my thumb, so I don't really want to wrangle anymore. All I had was my tray from the Weber, my little baking tray. They can just get buried in the sand. And that was just sitting over the top of the tiniest bit of smoke, smouldering away. That opened them up. There you go, there's the number I've just done to myself with that oyster. So that's why I probably won't be eating any more oysters after that one. So, after smashing down all those oysters, over there, sorry. After smashing down all those oysters over there just recently, that still clearly wasn't enough for my dinner. So what I've got here is two pizza bases and a heap of ingredients, and I've got the pizza stone for the Weber Q. So if you guys have a Weber, or anybody who's interested, the Weber cooks a pretty bloody good pizza on the stone in there. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna make up. So a fun little fact for you all is my first ever job was as a pizza boy at Eagle Boys. When I was 12 years old, I started there on $6 an hour. So that's me, originally that's my roots where I come from, uh, and then I'm gonna try to show my little bits of expertise tonight on the camera and show you what I make up. But I'm gonna make a, I didn't wanna bring any like chicken or anything out on this trip with me because chicken's a real pain to cart around and have to cook up. I've got some pepperoni there. I've got anchovies. I've got an antipasto mix. I'll give you the rundown on what I'm gonna make and we'll get stuck into it. Okay, so having a look around, I've got two pizza bases here. One pizza is gonna look a little something like this. Antipasto anchovies they're both going to have these sauces salami can go with this one and then the salami can also go with the bacon the avo the onion i'm going to have a mixture of those two with this one as well so one's going to be like a mediterranean antipasto style pizza the other's going to be a pepperoni bacon and then a mixture of vegetables there right so here's how you set up the pizza stone on the weber for any of you who've never seen it before it's just got a aluminium tray there that goes on top of the stone just like that on top of the trivet so that's what we'll make the base sit on in a second I'll shut that all right so rather than make it hard for myself trying to swing the camera around while I cut up the ingredients I'm just going to prep the pieces now I'll give you guys a look before I chuck them on you can have a look at them and then we'll get them cooking and I'll show you the nice fun part when the cheese is all melted and they look delicious all right guys, the pieces are all prepped, so I'll give you a look. First up 
and some more Mediterranean style ones. We've got red onion, got a Tuscan antipasco mix on there, pepperoni, mushroom. So it's got the sun-dried tomato, the cheese. Cheese always goes on the bottom of a pizza. Looks better, functions better, cooks better. All right, and then over here, got rash of bacon, avocado, pepperoni, tomato, fresh tomato that is, red onion, all on there ready to go as well. So we'll probably start with, which one should I start with? I don't really know. This one, oh yeah, actually this one because it's on the silver tray. There you go, that answers it for me. So that's preheated. We'll slide this in now. Turn the heat up to about medium on there and then we'll check in on that one in about 10 minutes. There's that one done, so I'll take that off. I'm gonna cut that up and then I'll do the old switcheroony with this one right here in a moment. The next addition that I'm making to the D-Max, as far as camping gear is regarded, is, there we go, a tea towel. <laughs> if I had a tea towel, I'd be way better off, but I just had to wet a couple bits of paper towel there. There's the Mediterranean one. And then over here, I've just chucked this one on now, so that's far and away. I'll give that about another 10, 15 minutes too. I'll slice that one up and give her a taste test. Now, I shouldn't have to do a taste test in front of you guys to know that this tastes good and go, mm, 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 yummy, 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 because I know it's going to taste good. All right, and last but surely not least, we have this bad girl right here. Here goes the wet paper towel trick once more. Oh, yeah, that's hot. So I'll dish that one up now and then get stuck into that too. I'm just gonna sit here, enjoy the final few pieces of this pizza and then ponder about what I'm gonna do for the rest of the week, basically, how I'm gonna structure it. But that's what we're gonna be in the episodes to follow. So if you've made it this far through this episode, I really appreciate you being here. I'm gonna work out what I'm gonna do for tomorrow, whether or not that be hang around here and film one more episode or move on and just wing it and try this other one and hope that I don't regret it. Well, I'm gonna work that out. But my biggest dilemma at the moment is having that drone and the damn drone not connecting to the remote on my phone and going up in the sky. I have no idea what to do. And without getting mobile reception, I'm not gonna work it out. So I really wanted to use that for this trip. So I'm sort of like, oh, do I leave this site a day earlier than anticipated just to make that work and hope that that pays off. So I may or may not do it. But that's tomorrow's problem and you'll find out in the next episode so thanks heaps again and i'll see you then